What is up you guys? It's your buddy Upshaw, bringing you a somewhat long-awaited options settings for Battlefield 1 video that a lot of people have been requesting. If you kind of just watch my channel for the gameplays, feel free to ignore this this video for today, but I'm just posting up a video showing what my controls are, my sensitivity, my field of view, lots of different things. People have been interested in it, so I figured I might as well share. So, getting right into it. When we're into the basic controls, I'm rocking obviously vibration. I don't invert my look or my flight. I have my soldier stick sensitivity set at 27%. My vehicle stick sensitivity at 30%. Soldier zoom sensitivity is 100%, but I, I kind of will talk about this a little bit more in advanced settings. I do run, a lot of people consider 27% to be somewhat low for soldier stick sensitivity. But Battlefield 1, for the most part, is a pretty long-range game. If you are using your flares properly as a scout, if your teammates are spotting, hopefully, then you'll usually know the general direction that players are coming from. Heck, I mean, you can pretty much always play the lane game. I'm just going to quit in and out so I don't get kicked from the match. But you can pretty much always play your lane. You can kind of look towards where flags are, and you can expect people to be coming from that direction. When you're rocking a lower sensitivity... It usually results in you being a little bit more accurate and a little bit more consistent with a small, small detriment of the fact we that you won't be able to really whip charge. around to hit targets. Now, my soldier weapon zoom is default hold, vehicle weapon zoom is default hold, and steady scope is hold. Now, when I go into my control schemes, I again, I just run the default control schemes. I have been considering switching firing from R2 to R1 because that will actually allow you to shoot quicker. The trigger pull on a PlayStation 4 controller is sort of long, so that would allow you to just basically pop off shots as quick as possible, but I might do that. It's something to consider. Uh, I run the default stick dead zone of 22%, and all my zoom sensitivities are 100%. Now, one big thing I run is uniform soldier aiming. It is default off, and the description reads, enables the use of a procedural aim rate instead of the original preset numbers. The procedural aim rate tries to approximate constant movement in 2D screen space regardless of current field of view or zoom amount. This helps with muscle memory for aiming. Now, I've seen a lot of great players run this off. I personally like it on. I just find my shot, again, is more consistent. And I don't know. I just find it works very, very well for me. I keep the coefficient for uniform soldier aiming at 133%, which is the default as well. Other than that, I have decouple aiming from turning off for vehicle control, and then I have vehicle aim relative to control on. Again, this one is kind of more personal preference. This is what I choose to run. And I have vehicle decouple aiming from turning when I am a passenger. Now, getting back into the gameplay settings, this is again a little bit different than what some of you guys might see. A lot of this stuff is the same except for the chat log. I have that shown. So basically whenever somebody requests ammo or requests an order, it should pop up. I have the, where's the other one that I meant to show? The kill log. Yeah, I have that changed to show. A lot of the people have that. The default setting is high. And I have the kill log fi filter set to all. So you can also set it to just your team. You can set it to just your squad. Or you can just set it to yourself if you're just really selfish and you want to see all those dank kills in the feed. Or you can have it in the nearby, which is kind of cool. But I keep it at all, we are losing and that will give me Edward. information on people that I've been shooting at, whether or not they've died or not. I don't know. I just find it, it gives me a lot of information. It can be a lot coming at you, but ow. So to pick up where I left off, let's go back into gameplay. So we got to kill we vlog. Have I had that as show instead of hide. Um, award show, but some people have to turn these off. I've got the vehicle seat info information shown, critical messages shown, I have usage data shown. Um, that's something just kind of for EA though. And then for hit indicators, I have my indicator visibility 100%. For body shots, I have the white headshot or the white indicator. For headshots, I have yellow, and for kills, I have red. So while most of my headshots are going to be kills because I play mostly as the scout class, there are a few times where having a yellow headshot is useful to you. If I'm running the cavalry kit and I'm sniping at people at range, that has the Russian 1895 trench sniper rifle. And that thing will only do around 74 damage at range with a headshot. 
Well, that tells me then that I can shoot them anywhere in the body after that headshot and then have the kill. So overall, I like having the headshot color changed to something different. You can kind of set it to whatever you want it to be. I personally find yellow is pretty good, and I find it easy to see. I also have damage base shape on, which basically accurate. changes the size of the hit indicator based on how much damage you're doing to them. Uh, for my mini map, which a lot of people have been asking about, I have texture opacity set to 50%. It rotates with view. I have the flight zoom radius at 250. My vehicle zoom radius is 75. My on foot is is 100. It's default at 75. And I personally find this works really good, and I'll talk about that now in a second. And I have my minimap size set to 125%. So, if you look down in the bottom left corner, you can see that my minimap is bigger than default. And the reason that I have it like this is normally a flare on the default radar takes about, up about the entire radar. That's what I'm trying to say here. But now when I have a flare on at this size, I can see it within my big circle. And that kind of allows me... If I'm over here and I can pop it over there, if I'm wanting to run into a building, imagine there's a building right here, and I want to see if there's anybody in that building, but I'm over here. I can pop it, see everybody in the building, and then I will be able to kind of, okay, I know this guy's upstairs, I can run upstairs and pop him off. Overall, I find it's just a really good minimap size. I'm kind of just using my imagination there because I'm literally in the middle of the desert, but I find that works very well for me. I would encourage tweaking around with it yourself, I, this is my personal preference for map size, but I've seen a big, big amount of variety. Overall, I kind of just want you guys to know that it's there and that you can customize it. And kind of just pick to your choosings. Mine is not necessarily the best, and I'm always kind of tweaking around with it day to day. Now, I think that's all my settings for in here. Uh, ADS, I have, we have a lot of the default button. capacities on. Into my advanced, the only thing that I've turned off is parachute auto deploy. I like to choose when I deploy my parachute. That allows me to kind of get a little bit closer to the ground if I happen to jump out of a plane and really get the drop on people when they're unexpecting it. Other than that, everything else is default. I have aim assist auto rotation and aim assist slowdown on, which basically gives you hacks in this game. It's way too strong. I'm planning on posting another video talking about aim assist how it can be changed to make the game a little bit more competitive. But right now, it's you pretty much can't run with it off because you're going to be playing against a bunch of aimbots. It's insanely, insanely strong as is. We have lost Objective uh, Charlie. And I believe that's it. I also have my music volume completely off. If you notice in the loading screens, it seems really, very, very quiet. That is why. It's because I have my music volume completely turned down. Um, I have it set to headphones because I have headphones. I have a change to in the voice settings. I have a change to the team speaking my language because sometimes the players can actually give you vital cues as to what's going on around you. Guy might yell out, oh, uh, I need ammo. And if they're speaking a different language, well, you might not know to give them ammo. So I also keep the game announcer voice on. I changed it to mail, but again, that's just kind of personal preference. I have VoIP turned to off for streaming because I don't want people in my squad to just hear me blabbering to XX Phase 420 Blaze with me, no scopes, get at me wolf, in the chat. So I have it set to off, you obviously want to keep this on, that allows you to communicate with your squad members. And for my video settings, I have my brightness at 59%, but that's just got to do with my own television, doesn't matter to you guys. For my field of view, I have 79, I think that got reset, I meant to have vehicle field of view up to 79 as well. Um, but yeah, I have field of view for on foot at 79. I think 85 would be kind of nicer, but because when you have a higher field of view, you actually have to render out more on screen because I'm playing on the PS4, the PS4 already kind of chugs with battlefield one. It's really being pushed to its limit. The game on average runs about 50 FPS. There's some pretty nasty drops, especially if you're playing operations mode, and that can really hinder your aiming if you're trying to stay on target and all of a sudden you just start losing frames and you drop down to 20 frames. It can be pretty brutal, and you might notice a little bit of that if you're running at not yeah, so insane of a field of view. If you're running at way too high, your PS4 has to work harder, and you might drop frames, and you'll probably lose performance, and that can cause you to miss shots. And just 
decrease your ability to track enemies. So that's something to think about. Um, motion blur is at default 50%. Again, that's one of those things that if you adjust it, it can affect your frame rate. And that's a bad thing. When I get the PlayStation 4 Pro eventually, I'll probably tweak some of these field of view and motion blur settings. And I run colorblind off. Again, if you're colorblind, you might want to tweak that. Um, and I think that is it. So I hope this got, this helped you guys. Um, I know for most of you guys, you just kind of watch my stream or watch my videos for gameplay. But I do get this question a lot in stream. I want to have it as a kind of an answer for people who want to know my settings. So yeah, I hope you guys enjoyed the video. Taken objective I done. will be streaming later tonight and tomorrow as always. Thank you so much for watching. And I'll catch you in the next one.